Gadsden flag. What? I guess they actually think they're standing up for liberty by supporting the war. sorts of stuff that, that we'll be doing. Um, we're working with a group called Jubilee USA and also a group called uh, the IMF Resistance Network. So one of them is uh, expressly uh, anti-authoritarian, anti-capitalist, and the other one, Jubilee USA, is uh, mostly religious organizations, faith-based organizations who are interested in, uh, in helping and House, like global poverty um, and uh, yeah so so we're just going to be resisting the IMF and World Bank meetings. What's the focus of the uh, protest here about how the, uh, the IMF, the Monetary uh, Fund, imposes harsh restrictions on uh, yeah. third world countries uh, for their loans that they make? Sure, yeah. We, uh, we are of the position that uh, 
they, they used to be called, well, uh, there, there are conditions that the IMF places on loans called uh, poverty reduction programs. That's the new term for them. Um, and these programs are, are pretty draconian. Anytime uh, the IMF They, they impose conditions on that country, such as uh, they, they're told to weaken uh, labor laws, environmental laws, um, a lot of this kind of thing, uh, so that their economy can be geared specifically toward paying the money back to the IMF. Um, and uh, this happens a lot. Uh, Pakistan recently had a, had a restart in their IMF loans to get more money. Um, because of the flooding and all that. So they're, they're really a predatory organization in that sense. Um, and they cause a lot of a lot of hardship and struggle in the world. So we just think they generally need to be opposed. And their meetings are just, you know, a, a, an opportunity to, to sort of visibly do that. There's a couple of books. I think uh, I've read a uh, bit of Professor of an Economic Hitman, I think he, he took part in a lot of that and explains a lot of what goes on. Also, there's a book, um, uh, Best Democracy Money Can Buy, which also mentions a lot in there, too. So, um, we wanted to, and you know, not that you didn't do a good job explaining, but there's a lot that's involved in, if you really, you know, read some of the stuff, it's kind of shocking about the, the things that, that they make the countries do in order to get the money. And they almost never are able to pay it back. So they have to, to uh, become poorer as a result, and even worse, this is than it were beforehand. So, the attorney doesn't even describe that. So, put out a $103,000 contract for a private security firm to do uh, monitoring of uh, any potential terrorist activities, and uh, they hired this firm. Uh, I, I got the exact term of the name of it. It's like Terrorist Research uh, Incorporated or something like that. But uh, they actually did research on Westchester University students. <laughs> and, they said, yeah. and they were reporting that to all the uh, law enforcement agencies like in Pennsylvania. Well, anyway, this became known a few weeks ago. A big stir came out. We have a right you know, to uh, protest what we're doing here. You know, and uh, there's, here they have this so-called terrorist research organization uh, making reports of law enforcement agencies. So they uh, ceased that activity, and the uh, director of Homeland Security for Pennsylvania, who oversaw all of this, uh, just resigned today uh, because of the flop that came up about it. Rendell was, you know, got caught uh, basically with Eagle's face, uh, <laughs> trying to justify why they would do something like that. Canceled the contract, and the head of Homeland Security, who initially authorized the contract, has, has resigned as of today. Yay. And Riddell says, "This is a horrible thing; it never should have happened." You know. They also put the end the Fed rallies from last November in that report, where they were saying that there's white supremacists, there were anti-Semitic uh, people, that uh, they were made they were dared to make anti-government statements. Uh, this actually became something of a joke because they said that in Pittsburgh there was a pub crawl before a noon and the Fed rally, which is an odd thing to say. I don't know how you do a pub crawl, you know, starting at nine in the morning or something. But the reality was that the pub crawl was the night before. So, terrorist pub crawl. It was a holy site. I think the city is Accra, and it's been in dispute between who owns it between the Hindus and the Muslims for centuries. And this week, an Indian court divided up the city and gave two-thirds of it to the Hindus and one-third to the Muslims because they thought the Muslim claim to the property was more credible than the Muslims. And they sent out police and, and the army expecting that there would be a huge uprising in the country because of this. And it was very calm and peaceful. And they said that India has risen to a level of tolerance where people now don't have to be, you know, they thought it was a fair decision. So it'll probably be appealed, but right now it's a good thing. If only we could do the same here in the United States. We're talking about building a mosque a few blocks away from uh, supposedly Ground Zero. 
And the mosque they're talking about doing actually, you know, they're talking about making a multi-religious center. I mean, that's what the Muslim leader is developing, this mosque is talking about doing. I mean, that to me is, it would be the solution to the problems we're seeing. Making a really a multi-religious uh, center where you're going to have Muslims, Jews, and Christians come together. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a tremendous statement to uh, what happened there on 9-11? That we could build a uh, religious place of worship that would afford that opportunity for people in the United States. But yet still you have people here, not to mention any names, who would be or so dead against uh, building any mosque close to Grand 11. Uh, it's just, it just rises the whole level of religious intolerance in this country, uh, which is exactly what this country was built to be against, to be a haven for them. For those still serving overseas around the world. Now we're down to Philly at the federal courthouse. And what I'd like to do is read here uh, what I said over there. So, uh, while we may disagree about many things with the victims of the FBI raids and their colleagues, this libertarian and most libertarians stand with you in opposing this oppression. And we are with you in opposing the U.S. government's imperial wars. Now is the time to put our differences aside and to speak for liberty with one voice. For as they do to you now, they may one day try to do to all. Uh, these raids have only one purpose, to silence dissent. We can't let them succeed. Libertarians have stood at this very courthouse, well, the courthouse in Philly, uh, informing juries of their right to nullify bad law. Now this despite government threats and the arrest of our activists at federal courthouses in Allentown and New York City. Likewise, the anti-war movement cannot allow itself to be intimidated by the FBI's thuggish tactics. We will continue organizing and holding rallies for peace. We will continue to call for the immediate withdrawal of the subpoenas, and we will continue to call for the return of all property stolen by the government during these raids. That these terrible raids are happening comes as no surprise. Uh, the never-ending war on terror is in reality a war on our rights. The government always extends its power and becomes more oppressive during armed conflicts. Over two centuries ago, Madison, James Madison, warned us of the dangers of war. Quote, of all the enemies to public liberty, war is perhaps the most to be dreaded because it comprises and develops the germ of every other. In war, too, the discretionary power of the executive is extended. No nation could preserve its freedom in the midst of continual warfare." End quote. Heed the wisdom of the founders. End the wars and end the oppression.